Hello, this is Reg in York. I'm going to do a presentation on qualitative data analysis. This is just an introduction to that topic. There's lots more to learn, of course. Let's first of all talk about qualitative and quantitative research. When you have quantitative data to analyze, you have information on a set of study subjects where the subjects are either placed into discrete categories or they are given a number with numerical value. The examples are given there of things that would have numerical value like dollars and height and so forth. When you have qualitative data, you have words to analyze. Take this example. I believe the most important thing to teach children is respect. Well, these are words to be analyzed. Let's look at a couple of examples uh, and ask yourself the question, are these studies qualitative? I'm going to pose a couple of them up there on the screen. I'm going to ask you to hit the pause button. Think about these three. Decide whether you think they are qualitative. And then hit the, the button to come back to me and we'll talk. Okay, the first example, you're giving a depression scale before and after treatment. A depression scale has a score, so it has numerical value. It's a quantitative kind of study, not qualitative. Number two, you ask your, your clients to make statements about what has been most meaningful to, the, to them in treatment. You're asking for statements. You're asking for words. This would be an example of a qualitative study. Number three, you ask people to record the number of stressful things they've experienced in the past year with a list of things like getting divorced, being fired from a job, and so forth. Let's assume there are 10 things on this list. You ask them to indicate how many of those they've experienced. Well, the answer is it's quantitative, not qualitative. They will give you a number. The number has numerical value from 0 to 10. Some of the first major steps in qualitative research would be to uh, decisions made about the research question uh, being examined or the phenomenon that is being observed. Uh, maybe, for example, we want to know if social work students embrace the strengths perspective in their approach to clients. That is one example of, an, of a research question. We might want to know, uh, what is your advice uh, about how to develop a good graduate program in social work, where it's an open-ended question, and you want to analyze that. Next, a decision is made about the extent that the study is guided by a particular conceptual framework for analysis. In the first example I gave it a moment ago, I said, do students embrace the strengths perspective? Well, the strengths perspective, therefore, would be a framework. A framework is a way of thinking. It's a way of guiding your thinking and guiding your analysis and telling you which way to look and so forth. First example would be uh, using a, a perspective. The second one, if you're just asking for advice about something, um, that's generally not, this, I don't think of that as being particularly well guided by a particular framework for thinking. So if you have a theoretical framework like the strengths perspective or cognitive theory about behavior, then you, of course, need to know uh, what that actually means. Uh, what is cognitive theory? What is the strengths perspective? You need to understand those things ahead of time. Let's use an example. You might want to review a set of statements from social work students about how they would approach a given client when they review a case description and see how it relates to the strengths perspective. Uh, this is just one example that you might do. This is one example of qualitative research that might be undertaken that, in fact, uh, would be guarded by a, a particular framework of thinking. Let's look a little bit about the study methods to be used in uh, in quantitative research. How will the sample be selected is one example, of course, one, one, one part of the method. What is the nature of the questions being addressed by the qualitative study? How will data be collected and how will it be uh, analyzed? 
let's look at the question of what is uh, qualitative data analysis. Quantitative, qualitative analysis entails a structured method of analyzing words so as to capture the nature of the phenomenon under study. What is, how, how you would, would you capture it with a word or phrase? Is this, let me ask you this question. Is the structured method decided ahead of time or after you have collected and, and engaged in the analysis of the words under review? Do you lay out your procedures A, B, C, we're going to do this first, then we're going to do this, and then we're going to whatever, or do you wait till it's all done and decide? Well, the answer is ahead of time. That is, in essence, very critical to the nature of what research is all about. The idea of having methods that are dictated, uh, decided upon ahead of time. Coding is one step in qualitative data analysis. Some forms of qualitative research employ coding as a method of analysis. A code is a word or phrase that captures the essence of what is being said in a sentence or paragraph or a segment of writing. It's a way of reducing a lot of words to just a few that captures the meaning so they can be analyzed to help you understand the phenomenon under study. I want you to, uh, this is a, an example I'm going to use here. I want you to hit the pause button, review this thing on the screen, and then come back to me. Okay, you understand this was a survey of social workers. One of the responses to this open-ended question was as follows. Quote, a sound theory base and not just techniques. So my question to you is, what, how would this be coded? How would you, what word or phrase, I would suggest here, you just think of a word. What word best captures the essence of what the advice is here? I would say theory, just the word theory. That seems to be at the heart of what this person is saying. Let's go on to another statement. I want you to hit the pause button again and uh, read this statement and decide how you would code it. Then come back to me. Okay, I would say I have two different, I have a word and a phrase uh, that I would, that I derive from this. The first one is techniques. That seems to be a major thing being said. There's a second one, though. I, there's a second theme, I believe, here. The very last sentence about knowing what works best. So I just simply put down the words, what works. So I have two codes. One is techniques, and one is what works. You, of course, may have different words. And as long as those words seem to be essentially what I have said, I think we're on the same page. Otherwise, you and I would need to talk about about what are you seeing that I don't see? What about this one again? If you will just hit the pause button and look at that uh, statement, decide how it should be code coded, and come back to me. Okay, I would say that this has to do with generalist practice. Uh, in social work, we sometimes refer to practice as either being generalists or not or being specialized. Uh, you may not be familiar with the nomenclature of social work and social work education and social work practice, but I would say this one focuses on generalist practice. Basically, the advice is make sure you prepare people for generalist practice, not just for specialized practice. Well, one thing, one final thing I want to say to you here is um, there are levels of coding. We have examined only one, only the first level of coding by coming up with the first um, way of capturing the essence of each statement. There are other levels of coding that are used. Uh, just an example uh, with regard to the advice about uh, how to design a new MSW program was um, what came out of that was that a number of different codes could be categorized as uh, clinical practice. There seemed to be a lot of them that were suggesting that the, a new school of social work should focus on clinical practice, not generalist practice, although there was one that you just saw that had the generalist practice as the theme. 
But there were a number of people who said things that would, say, would suggest the new program should be clinically focused. So uh, we've examined the nature of qualitative data analysis with a brief description of coding as one aspect of it. You can, of course, explore many other types of qualitative data analysis that are associated with a range of types of qualitative research. This was just one illustration designed to help you see the nature of qualitative data analysis. I hope this helps. Good luck.